Welcome to the Sales Acceleration Show. My name is Michael Hamlet and I'm the founder of Chemetic and in this show we'll do everything to accelerate your business. And one of the biggest topics that always comes back every single day is pricing. So it's about time I invite some pricing experts in the show to ask all the tough questions. So introduce yourself to our viewers and tell us what you do. Hi, I'm Laurent David, hosting. I'm the founder and CEO of Price Impact. We are pricing experts, so we help companies to improve their pricing capabilities to achieve more revenue or more profit. And how does that work? So I, I'll, I'll tell you questions I get. So I'm looking at my product and at a certain day I'm thinking something's wrong with this pricing. Mm -hmm. So what do you guys do then? Actually, there are two big cases. Mm -hmm. The first one is a company that is already selling their product or their service or their app. Mm -hmm. So it means that they're already a finished product and they already have a price and clients. Mm -hmm. In this case, we help them to optimize their pricing. Uh, they might uh, be completely wrong. And optimization yes. means it can go up or it can go down? Both, we don't know. Actually, it depends on the strategy of the company. Yeah. Uh, it depends if they chase more volume or mm -hmm. more revenue or more profit. And depending on the strategy, we will advise them to adopt a pricing strategy, the mm -hmm. right pricing strategy. And that's the first case. The second case is innovation pricing. It's when a company is putting a product or service for the first time on and the have, market. And they have no clue. And they have no clue. And actually, even existing companies that are innovating companies, every year they launch new products, new services. So every year, again, is the same pain. How should we price it? Mm -hmm. And that's how we, we help them. Just before the show, you mentioned something to me that most companies are underpricing, that you've seen as a pattern of actually yes. you're able to ask more. Yes, um, especially startups actually, startups yeah. and scale-ups, uh, there's a paradox with that. Um, they create a lot of value for their clients. Mm -hmm. uh, they try to be better than the existing competition, uh, existing solutions. So they create a lot of value, but at the same time, they would like to have some volume on the first sale, so they underprice. And uh, they, it creates a problem because yes, they have the first sales, but at a price that is really low compared to the value they deliver. Mm -hmm. And they, 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 they keep growing with that, with that low price. And uh, they repeat the same mistake and then, yeah, they can even scale with a, a, a price that is not correct. And hence, it means a lot of money is left on the table. They could have reached much more revenue uh, with exactly the same volume, the same effort, just with a better pricing. Mm -hmm. And how do you guys do it? Is it like interviews and then there is some mathematics and intelligence stuff, of course? Yes, indeed. Uh, um, before answering to that, uh, I think it's good to have a good idea of the three main approach of pricing. Yeah. Um, the first one is the cost plus approach. So most, of com most companies, they look at the cost, they target the margin and then they deduct the price. Mm -hmm. Other companies, what they do, they do competitive based pricing. They look at the competition, one, two, three, maybe five competitors, they look at the price and then they say, okay, we will be cheaper than the competition or more expensive than the competition and that's it. Mm -hmm. But actually there's a third way to do pricing is called value-based pricing. is to under understand the perceived value of your service, of your product, and from there you can deduct the right price. And you say perceived. Uh, the perceived value, yeah. not only delivered. Yeah, yeah, the perception yeah, yeah. is very, very important. And actually, it's the best way to do pricing, um, but indeed it's the most complex one. So how to do it? Um, yes, we do it through interviews. There are, uh, it's special questionnaires, mm -hmm. so we can understand the purchase decision uh, process of the buyers. Mm -hmm. If you do that with 10 people, 100 people, 1000 people, you can have really strong and very powerful statistics, and mm -hmm. then you can optimize the pricing according to the perceived value. Is there a difference between B2B and B2C? Because of course, it's, I, mean, it's very, I mean, it seems different. Actually, the approach is not that different. Uh, mm -hmm. In both cases, you have to target the decision makers and understand how they think mm -hmm. and the weight of the price in, that, uh, in their purchase decision process. Mm -hmm. And in most of the case, we understand that price is not in the top three drivers, actually, uh, especially in B2B the quality of the service, the speed, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of other things comes bef uh, come before the price. Mm -hmm. And you have to understand that to avoid that mistake to underprice. And as we said, it's about the perceived value. So understanding that, you know how to communicate mm -hmm. with uh, your leads. 
you defend the value and then you discuss about the price, but start by defending your value. I can imagine in, if you do the questionnaire, you do the approach in B2B, it must be tougher than in B2C because in B2B you're sitting somewhere in the bar and you think, why on earth should I answer these guys and probably they're going to charge me more or something like that. Yeah, uh, actually uh, it's a bit tricky. Uh, <laughs> when, when you approach the respondents, uh, you don't, we, we, we don't come saying, okay, hey, we are price impact and we, <laughs> we are doing a survey to, uh, to help our clients. We want to know how yeah. much we should charge yeah, you, right? No, we, we, so. don't, we, don't, we, we come to, to understand what they value the most and the least. And actually yeah. they, they understand it will be a good benefit for them at the end. And when you have a good value-based pricing strategy, Actually, um, uh, it's, a, it's a like balance. Uh, it's a, you, you end up with a win-win situation on both sides, mm -hmm. on the client side and on the provider side. If the client uh, really agree, uh, agrees with the value, mm -hmm. he, he, he will agree with the new price. Yeah. But if he, feels, you, if he always, always felt that uh, the value was low and the price too high, as the provider, you will understand that you should maybe decrease your price or remove some elements of your mm -hmm. service and then you will have different offers you, and different prices. Is there a pattern you see? We, we talked about startups and they underprice most of the time. Mm -hmm. Is there a pattern with bigger companies? They overprice or what do you see? Yeah, um, indeed there's a pattern. Big companies at the moment, they, uh, they don't understand that the perceived value is decreasing with the time mm -hmm. and they try to keep the price high. Uh, and sometimes they even try to increase the price because the cost increased. Yeah. So that's really the companies that have a cost plus approach mm -hmm. and they don't understand the needs of the market and that the market is changing and challenging them. And then there's a problem happening. They lose market shares, etc. So usually indeed big companies, well-established companies uh, put their price too high because they, 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 they are too disconnected from the market. Mm -hmm. And actually, yeah, that's what we recommend. We, we recommend the, all the companies to iterate on their pricing and with that value-based pricing approach. So they will understand that the market is changing, that they should maybe change the product or the service mm -hmm. and uh, to increase the value and the perceived value. With the so time. if I'm looking at a product and I've been trying to figure out pricing, what would be your advice? Is there anything you say, okay, start there, have, have a go at this, yes. try that? Um, the, um, the first advice is dare to ask your leads um, if they would pay for your prototype. Mm -hmm. uh, don't wait to have your, your product finished. Uh, you can already ask with, a, with the concept, even with a picture you can ask. Most of the startups uh, or young entrepreneurs, they go to see relatives, uh, friends, and they say, okay, do you like my product? They say, yes, yes, of course. Uh, would, you, would you pay for that? Uh, not sure. Yeah. So already with that kind of question, uh, you can understand if you can monetize your product or not. Mm -hmm. But of course, don't ask that only to your relatives. Ask that to 10, 20 people. people. And it doesn't take that much time, maybe one week, and uh, you can avoid a, a lot of mistakes by doing that. Mm -hmm. And most of the startups, they don't dare to ask that question. They stop just before that Weird question, but it's so, so important to ask that mm -hmm. really early. And to keep going, asking the people about the price. What do you think about my price? Dare to ask. That's yep. the first advice. First advice, yep. dare to ask. Yes. Second one? Second if you one, say one, there must be two. Yes, yes, there are, there are many actually. <laughs> um, second one is your strategy has to be really clear as soon as possible. Yeah. Um, most of the, the, the startups they think that the right strategy is to chase volume. They think, okay, if we have the volume, we will have the revenue, we will have the profit. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it's not true at all. Um, you can have a lot of volume, but uh, one million multiplied by zero euro, it doesn't give you mm -hmm. any, any revenue. And when you understand that, if you ask yourself the, the right questions, you will see that you will adopt a, a completely different pricing strategy. Mm -hmm. uh, so it has to be very clear if you want profit, if you didn't raise any funds and you need profit to grow, mm -hmm. uh, you will adopt another pricing strategy. Because if I make the jump to like SaaS software, yeah. they have a lot of these acquire to upsell strategies mm -hmm. where you actually almost give something almost for free so you can upsell them stuff. Because mm -hmm. that goes against what you're just saying. Yeah, that's a strategy. Actually, they, are, um, they try to serve different segments. Normally, mm -hmm. uh, 
they should adopt that, uh, that approach by understanding that there are different segments, that some people don't value yet the, the solution, but would like to try a few things. So don't give everything about your solution. Mm -hmm. uh, and don't ask too much about it. But other people uh, has a really good uh, perceive it at, um, uh, I mean, give a lot of value to the, to the solution and are already willing to pay. And that should be the approach. Understand who are the people already willing to pay and who are the people that are not yet ready to pay and change your package accordingly. And would you, you would advise to just try? Sometimes I say to salespeople, you don't know, maybe just double the price, see what happens. Yeah, you try and ask. You ask. really need to ask. And actually there are techniques to understand. So uh, let me get back to that, to that case, the, the SaaS. Um, <laughs> A lot of, I mean, we have more and more companies having a, a, a SaaS model, and you have to design those packages and put a price on mm -hmm. those packages. And a good way to ask is uh, to show trade, uh, to, to force the respondent to make trade offs between mm -hmm. options. Uh, let me give you an example with cars. Okay, do you prefer BMW or Audi? BMW. BMW. Let's say you have a budget of 20,000 euro for a new car. I'm not uh, going to get there with the BMW. Eh? Sorry? You'll need more for a BMW. It depends which one. Yeah. If it's a Series 1 <laughs> yeah, okay. or an Audi okay. A3. <laughs> sure. So you prefer BMW. Yeah. Let's say you have 20,000. Um, do you prefer to buy a Series 1 BMW at 20,000 or an Audi A3 at 18,000? With more options. Same, okay. same options in both cases. Take the BM. You take the BM, but it's 2,000 more expensive. Yes. But because you like the brand. Probably, yes. And you are willing to pay 2,000 euro more for the brand. Yeah. Now, if I tell you in the Audi A3, it's full option. And in BMW, no option. And then I probably go to the A3. Ah, okay. So, okay, I can understand that the options, you, you give a lot of value to the options. Yes. And here, actually, we covered only four attributes the brand, the model, the price, and the options. Mm -hmm. Actually, we can cover 10, 100 attributes. And that's what the brain is doing when they choose. Mm -hmm. And when you develop a SaaS company, that's what you need to understand. How the people are choosing between the different packages mm -hmm. and what's the weight of the price um, between all the different attributes. That's why in SaaS you see a lot of these like standard and then yes, the pro exactly. becomes bigger and then yes. the, the corporate goes all the way So the, the challenge is double actually, is what you put in the packages and which price you put in each package. There you go. Yeah. And the answer is in the head of the customers. Mm -hmm. and not one customer, not 10, try to have 30, 40 people, the, 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 the opinion of a certain number of respondents. And then you will see, wow, actually the people, they value that option a lot and are mm -hmm. really willing to pay for that option. And probably it's different than what they think. I'm guessing very, very different. Because they're developing, developing things. Really. This is the main feature, but actually. We saw some cases, uh, you said, okay, sometimes you advise, okay, double your price. And we had some cases where, I mean, it was uh, quantified, it could triple the price Did they without do any problem. Did they had, because I, I can imagine if you say that, they'll have a big smile, but they're Huge. afraid of doing it. No. Are they? Because you have the numbers exactly. and you show, ah, okay. we have facts. Because I would be crying because I've yes. lost so much money in the last. Yes, uh, that's the big uh, difference. That most of the companies, they understand that, uh, but they don't know how to, to, to adopt a real value-based pricing approach. They understand, okay, we need package with different uh, personas. Uh, we need different price points, etc. But they don't know how to have the right answers. And the answers is in the head of the, the, mm. the, the customer. So they have to ask in the right way, really, uh, because especially if you, if you are scaling, um, it's better to ask your 10 first customers or 50 first customers before repeating that mistake for the mm -hmm. 1,000 next customers. Yeah, so yeah. there to ask, even if you, if you might lose some customers, but you know that you are scaling, ask, ask, get the answers, optimize your pricing, and before it's too late. And when should you do like a review? When should you review pricing? Often. Often. As what is often? Uh, is often. Um, because I mean, most companies, uh, they spend less than 10 hours per year 
on the pricing. Yeah. Less than 10 hours. And nothing. then a guy like me walks in and says, hey, Michael, do yeah. you know something about pricing? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, yeah, and actually... And it's it, gut feel, right? It's, yeah, yeah, yes. And actually, why, why they, 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 they don't spend that much time on pricing is, um, first, they don't realize the importance of pricing, while mm. it's the most impactful profit driver. Secondly, they don't have the skills or the, the, the But they the, don't the even people. know where to they go. They don't know. They huh? don't know because there are not that many things uh, on internet or in books. It's crazy, mm. yeah. But which, uh, which, by the way, is a great opportunity for you guys to talk about it and yes, fill the gap. Right? Yes, clearly. Yeah. And um, and uh, they they don't have the right tools neither. Mm-hmm. Uh, when companies are doing their pricing, usually they do that on on a paper or maybe on an Excel sheet, and that's it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, once you realize that, you start to develop your own tool, your own process, and the best companies, they review the price on a monthly basis. Monthly? Yes, yes. You can, because especially if you are growing fast, you have more customers, probably you have more segments, but different then, needs. Yeah. But then, to be a bit critical here, mm-hmm. if you have, I mean, a lot of SaaS companies have their pricing online, yep. right? If you have to change it every month, it's becoming a mess because you internally and then who ordered at what, I mean, I can imagine lots of issues in the background. Yeah, but it's good issues. If, yeah. it, if it helps you to have much more revenue or much more profit, uh, when you realize that you, you, you like to, uh, to face those kind of issues. And actually, uh, indeed, there's a challenge of communication. Mm-hmm. Uh, on your pricing page, usually you put three or four different prices. It mm-hmm. has to be very, very clear, uh, very simple. However, it doesn't mean that you don't less, have... Less is more, sorry, I'm gonna say, less is more? Yes. Meaning two is better than three or four? No. No? Doesn't no, matter. No. Three, four. Th- three or four, yes. Okay. Um, but it doesn't mean that you have only three or four price points. You can have much more. Mm-hmm. You see more and more pricing page with some uh, options. And when you click on it, you see the price it's is changing. And actually, sh- you should have a really good pricing model in the back end. And then you understand that you can have... 100, 1,000 different price but, points. Um, that's, that's a very good one. Should, because, I mean, should it then be, I would think if you see a pricing, you should, it should be easy to understand. Mm-hmm. Yes. Because if so many options and clicks and after mm-hmm. a while people get lost, say, how much is it now? I mean, that's mm-hmm. the worst question a sales can get. How much does it cost now? I can't mm-hmm. follow. And then you have to start explaining the whole model and all of mm-hmm. that. So you should avoid that, no? Yes, you should avoid that. Um, you should avoid uh, that start to be a mess in the head of the customer, but uh, you have to work on it, uh, on the communication of mm-hmm. your, your pricing. And really, even if your pricing model is very, very complex, you can display it in a very easy way, nice way. Think about the um, airplane tickets. Mm-hmm. When you Google, uh, when you go on a website, at the end for a flight ticket, you see only one price and you know that tomorrow it will be different. Mm-hmm. The model behind is very, very complex. It's changing every minute, but it's simply I, displayed. And I, I booked the hotel yesterday on bold.com. Yeah. No, mm-hmm. not bold, booking.com. Mm-hmm. And boy, oh boy, that was like one mass price and changed ah. the whole time. And I mean, I was like looking at it. Yeah, Jesus they're already Christ. in the extreme. Uh, that is really funky. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But there are. Yeah, they are already in the future compared to other industries, yeah. but other industries are really lagging behind. And um, we, we don't advise today startups to have a dynamic pricing, uh, mm-hmm. so the price changing every yeah. day. But, but I think but dynamic pricing in transactional business, okay, mm-hmm. but like in a, in, a, I mean like in a SaaS or in yeah. the same more established, it's a tough one, of course. Yeah. yeah. And uh, you, you actually, um, if you ask, if you have internally pricing workshops every month, you will ask yourself the right questions. And it's not only about price. You will better understand why the perceived value is high or low. You will review your products. You will review your communication. Mm -hmm. Uh, You will train better your sales team. Mm -hmm. Uh, It really, uh, having pricing workshop triggers a lot of things. While you're talking, I've been thinking the whole time Mm -hmm. about should you have different pricing, uh, like they say in French, à la tête du client, on, on the head of the client. So mm-hmm. I know this company can pay more than that company. Is that yes. something you should do or you yes. should avoid? No, you should do. You should do. Yes, that's, that's a perfect value-based pricing approach. You should t- try to understand um, why one customer 
is willing to pay more than another one. There's something, there's a, there is a reason. Mm. You need to try to understand that. And if you understand that, you can use that when you are selling your, your product, your service, and it will accept it. And, and if uh, you understand the difference between the two customers, both will accept the different so prices. If I would take that to mm -hmm. the extremes, mm -hmm. you should say if I have thousand customers, I should have thousand different prices. Exactly. So right. that's actually the ultimate. Yes. Completely changeable That's a perfectly model. optimized pricing. Yes. That's a pr and and I mean, from a sales point of view, I mean, from a process point of view, it's a tough one to implement. Yes. <laughs> I'm just thinking, don't, yeah, um, please uh, don't hire me to do this. Please. Right. <laughs> Ask them <laughs> as pragmatically I'm going nuts. But actually, I mean, it's the right way, right? Yes. It, it's shocking the first time and uh, most of companies are not used to that. But yeah. uh, there are many cases where they succeeded are doing that and th those companies are the most pro profitable one or actually thinking about cars i was in a very luxurious brand of car with a friend of mine we were looking into i mean he would buy a car and i realized if you go to bmw and a3 all these let's say more standard brands they always have packages sports mm. business corporate i don't know what and then they give you a discount but this luxurious brand and we actually visited too they didn't have any of that they just said what options do you want yeah. And they had a price per option, pretty mm -hmm. long list. And actually, I'm pretty sure if they would have combined, they would have lost money. And this way, you could do the most insane stuff. And yeah. said, yeah, you need a clock. Oh, yeah, you need that expensive clock in the dashboard. Why? Because you can. So actually, it is. They, they have a price exactly. for every customer pays something completely different. Yes. I don't think they have any standard, no. except the base model. Yeah. But nobody buys the base and, model. And uh, right? yeah, they understood it correctly, how to do that. And really, um, it's possible in other industries, too. Yeah. You just need to to start thinking like that. Uh, but, you, you, my you, customers are going to hate me if I start saying, guys, ah, you need to <laughs> flip the pricing model completely. <laughs> but really here, my, my point is very important. It's you can develop a really complex uh, pricing model, yeah. but communicate simply with the customer. And you need to discuss about the value, understand. And, uh, and actually, the customers, they, they value that, mm -hmm. that you, you, you care about them and they feel like it's completely tailor made for them. And, uh, and then they understand that the price is different also for them. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, and it's possible to develop that in a, in a lot of industries. Is there something that when you go to customers that, that really, that you know, you can have that, that frustrates you? Every single time they say the same stuff or they have the same opinion on something and you know it's wrong. Yeah. What would that be? Most of the companies, <laughs> yeah. Let it all out. <laughs> yeah. Most of the companies are, yeah, but the competition, and yeah, yeah, that's the first thing I would think actually. Yeah, and uh, okay, uh, give me five of your competitors. And for startups, usually they, they stop at two or three or they say, we don't have competition. So, okay, so uh, we cannot look at the competition. Or when they list them, actually, it's not relevant to, uh, to take them into account. Uh, I, we, we met a startup, they, they, thought they, they talked about a uh, a competitor that was based in uh, in Australia, it's not relevant at all. No. And don't base your pricing on that company in Australia, which is mm. a small company. It's not relevant at all. Uh, another thing. Uh, so, so yeah. let me mm. ask you a challenging question here. If so, if I say you come to me and then I say, okay, I have three competition. It's a very highly competitive market, and your study reveals that I should double my price. Mm. Then you should say, do it. Yes. Even if my competitors stay low. Yes. So yes. you're bold and say... Yes. Yes. And I would suggest that... You have to have a strong character to say that. Yes, yeah. but <laughs> because I will have the facts. Yeah. Uh, I, I will ask the clients how they compare with the competition. Mm -hmm. And I will understand what they value in your company that they don't value in the others. Mm -hmm. And uh, it will be based on facts. It's not like, okay, I think that... We have the facts, we interviewed 10 people or 50 or 100 people, and it's clear uh, you are much better than the competition. They value that and mm -hmm. they're willing to pay for that. Yeah. So uh, you are, even if you are a startup, if you are new, wow, your, your product or your solution is so amazing that they just wait yeah. for it and they're willing to pay for that. So avoid that mistake to align with the competition. You deliver much more value and it's perceived. Yeah. You, so go for it. You know you guys have one big issue. 
I mean, now the first thing we're going to do is check your pricing pace and see if it changes every single time. Every but, day. I mean, Changing every day. <laughs> I love it. Okay. At the end, at the end, I always I get out my big black Bible with the tough questions and ask very similar questions to my guests. Mm. First one is, there's so much going on. I mean, you have a startup actually. I mean, mm. it's going yes. to scale up. How do you focus? How do you know, how do you bring focus to what you're doing? We are lucky we have a really good coach. Yeah. I think... Uh, it, uh, it helps a lot to focus. Um, pricing, it's a huge industry actually. Mm -hmm. uh, it's niche for us. There are not that many pricing experts, uh, but you can help B2B companies, Everybody. B2C companies, Everybody. startups, scale-ups, uh, yeah. SMEs, large corporates. Uh, the demand is high, but we need focus. We provide services, but also solutions. Mm. And, um, yeah, and, and you know what they say, the richness is in the niches. Yes. So, yes. you know, and, uh, and yeah, we have a really good coach uh, that uh, helps cool. us. So, and how do you say no? That's a tough one. Yeah, it's, um, it's easier to say no when you know, when we know that we won't have a lot of impact. Uh, mm -hmm. we, we really would like to provoke a lot of impact, positive impact, measurable impact. Mm -hmm. And when we think it's not possible, uh, for multiple reasons, uh, we Danger. simply say no. Not gonna uh, work. Yeah, Go to our competitor, he's gonna yes. do it. Keep or them busy. Do it yourself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do, or do it yourself. Here is a movie, and, <laughs> explain yes, it. And uh, give a call back and, yeah. uh, in a few yeah. months, and uh, yeah, that's yeah. how we say no. What, what inspires you? Where do you get your inspiration? Uh, the impact, actually. Um, yeah, with pricing, you can trigger so many, so many things, uh, can have so much impact in the company, not only financial impacts, you can reduce the doubts, you can decrease the, the, the failure rates of, uh, of startups or even big companies. Mm -hmm. um, and it means you, yeah, you, 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 you improve the, the, the company, they can hire more people, uh, people understand that they, they can produce better products, better service, really, the impacts are multiple and that's what uh, drives us. Yeah. yeah. What's, what's uh, your biggest mistake you've done that you say, I'm never going to do that again? Yeah. Work, not privately. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I made many mistakes. <laughs> so, uh, and, but uh, it was great learnings. Um, it's to, to build the wrong team. Mm -hmm. uh, team is ultra important. You want to grow, and uh, be careful when you uh, when you, you hire. find uh, your co-founders. When you hire people, uh, it's better to take time than to uh, to jump on the the, the first people. Mm -hmm. uh, and I made some mistakes in the past, mm -hmm. and uh, now I'm much more careful with that. Pretty cool. Yeah. And so, where can we learn more about you or your company? On our LinkedIn page. Uh, also on our website, we are quite active on Instagram too. Just name name the name the website again. The URL. Priceimpact.com. Priceimpact.com. Yes. It's on the. It's yes. On the cup, my friends. Think about branding straight away. Good. I love it. Okay. Thanks a lot. I'm. You're I welcome. actually, what sticks to me, really yeah. sticks to me, if what you said is, if you have thousand customers, you should have thousand different prices. Yes. That's something that really stuck, which is an idea I never really yeah. thought through. So, thanks a lot for coming You're to welcome. the show. If you like what you've seen, give it a thumbs up, subscribe for a lot more, and just think as of now, you need to change your pricing today.